Hey folks, this is Chris Johnson at Living Waters Fly Fishing. We are going to do another edition of Shop Talk. Today we're going to talk about the drag systems on different fly reels. Now fly reels as a whole really aren't that complicated when it comes to the internal componentry at all. Uh, modern day bait casters, for instance, that they would use in like a tournament bass fishing scenario, they've got digital braking systems, some of them. We're nowhere near that in terms of fly reel. The real expense with the fly reel is how they're made and also the fact that there's so much more machining that goes into these things. Uh, so that's a lot of what separates the, the cost there is the fact that they're incredibly light, they're machined and cut out and, and it takes a lot longer to make some of these things as far as a actual uh, cutaway process goes, especially on reels like this, like the Ross Colorado. Um, you know, that spends a lot of time on a CNC router. The internals of a fly reel though, that's what differs a lot depending on what you get. There are a couple of main types of drag systems and we're gonna go through those. We're gonna talk about click and pull drag systems. We're gonna talk about conical drag systems. We're gonna talk about disc drag systems and then we'll talk about sealed drag systems as well. Uh, and there's representations of all of that here in front of me. To start off with the click and pull, it's probably the easiest to explain in the fact that the inside of the reel here just has a simple little clicker that kind of sits right down in the center here. And if you'll notice, this one points straight down. I know that's probably impossible to see on camera, but nonetheless, with this little Ross Colorado, whether it's right or left-hand retrieve, you don't have to change that in the store because the clicker is pointing straight down. That clicker gets caught in the teeth of this little pawl on this side, and that's exactly what we have, is when you snap this reel back together, you get that trademark that just that great, great sound that everybody loves with a click and pull. Now, some people aren't big fans of that. Um, I, I know one in particular individual, individual that I won't mention his name on here. He may have used to work here in the past too. So Tanner, if you're watching this, I forgive you for not loving that sound. But anyway, nonetheless, with this reel, it's incredibly, incredibly great for finesse applications, small stream trout, uh, you know, stream bass, sunfish, things like that. The thing I would mention is if you are going to purchase a click and pull reel, please make sure that this outer edge of the spool, not the frame, the spool is exposed. That way when a big fish tears out of here, you can apply pressure right there with your hand to slow the fish down. That's one of the most important things that's called palming. Uh, so make sure no matter the reel, we've got Able TRs, that has an exposed spool edge. We've got these little hardy ultralights. That has an exposed edge too, as well as a click adjustment where you can actually increase or decrease the tension of the click. And then with the Ross Colorado, like we mentioned earlier, it also has an exposed rim as well. Moving on to the next division of reels that we're gonna talk about today, we'll talk about conical drag systems. Now, Lamson is one of the only ones that really utilizes these anymore, uh, but the thing with these, and, and I'm not really gonna be able to show you the internals of what makes this work. If you have any more questions about this, Lamson has a lot of great write-ups and diagrams on their website and even some other places online that they have done uh, technical overviews of this as well. But basically, there are two cones that basically distribute that drag surface area that they are drawn into one another through string, uh, spring tension, and that's what slows the fish down. So instead of, say, a disc on top of a disc like this, you have a cone on cone, and that surface area basically is kind of contained in a housing, so to speak, versus an inefficient, heavier type drag system in this small of a package. Um, so they really utilize that conical drag system as with all lamps and reels, there's an O-ring in the system that keeps everything sealed and it's virtually maintenance free. So that's also a very nice thing about these reels. And the same style of drag system comes in, you know, their you know, mid hundred dollar reels as, as comes in their higher end reels. When you go to their big game ones, they beef it up a little bit more. Now in other, I would say the more popular style of drag system is a true disc drag. Now, a disc drag is exactly what it sounds like. You have a series of washers. Sometimes they're cork, sometimes they're carbon fiber, many times they're metal. Uh, I've heard of Rulon. I've heard of all sorts of different uh, materials being used uh, for disc drags. And basically, you're looking at two things. You want to apply resistance. Uh, so when, you know, the old adage of righty tighty, lefty loosey here, um, the whole deal is that when you apply pressure by increasing the pressure on that drag knob, it draws those discs closer together increasing the pressure and resistance uh, on a fish that is running away from you. Now, with the Ross Animus, this, this drag system has been in the field a very, very long time. 
This drag system used to be in a lot of the older Ross reels like the Cimarron Large Arbor and things of that sort. Um, it's a very similar drag system in many ways. Very, very, very dependable. I mean, this thing almost never fails. And you can ask Ross the same thing. They'll tell you it's, if not the most dependable, one of the most dependable drag systems they've ever created. With this, the thing that's nice is you simply tighten this. It draws the disc together. You're trying to increase resistance and dissipate heat. Because as a fish runs, just like the brakes on your car, if you've ever driven over a mountain pass and headed down, if you don't gear your car down and you just stomp on the brakes the whole time, chances are you're going to smoke your brakes. And that's the exact thing that can happen in a fly reel if there's not material in there that dissipates heat. And that's why a lot of cork drags are that way, where that actually dissipates heat really well as well. Uh, carbon fiber is another great material. Metal does that to a certain extent, but it does have to a lot of times be layered with other materials as well. Now, if we go into some of the big league drag systems where they're actually sealed, take a Nautilus for instance. The entirety of this drag system is housed inside this hub. So this is impervious to water and, and the thing, and you'll see like set screws and things like that that keep this thing locked in place where it's not gonna move. Uh, this is a, a Nautilus CCF X2. And CCF stands for cork and carbon fiber. So it's actually a blend of both materials. And so you've got washers in here in this drag system that the carbon fiber applies the pressure, the cork helps dissipate the heat very, very well. And carbon fiber actually does the same thing. So they're actually complementary materials that allow this drag system to be a heavy hitter, apply a lot of pressure when you turn this knob, but also dissipate heat even inside of a housing where it's not air cooled. Uh, so very, very important if you're gonna have a housed drag system. And then lastly, I would say this would, this would rank right up there as one of the best sealed systems on the market, and that would be Hatch. Hatch, one of the things, I mean, this is not anything to do with a drag system, one of the only reels out there, if not the only reel that I'm aware of, that actually has a machined foot where there's not screws attaching the real foot to the frame, uh, where that's actually all one piece frame. You don't have a couple of set screws right there going into the actual foot itself. But this giant hub is where all those washers are housed. And there are, I don't remember how many O-rings in construction, I think it's three. Uh, I think you have two on this and one on the top here where you've got three different O-rings at least. And I, don't quote me on that, I don't have a schematic in front of me. But there are so many O-rings in this construction to keep this thing impervious to salt water, sand, grit, grime, things of that sort. Uh, but this would be another example of a very, very high-end sealed drag system that, you know, if you wanted to stop Union Pacific, you can do that. Uh, but this, this drag knob, very easy to get to. And basically, as you tighten it, it just draws all that system together to increase resistance on an outbound fish. And so with that, you just have to select what drag system is right for you. If you're looking at, you know, bigger game, tarpon, heavy running fish, you might think about something, especially in a saltwater environment that is sealed uh, and that does have a, a very, very good capability of dissipating heat. If it's gonna be general freshwater usage, almost anything works. But if you're gonna do some carp and stuff like that that are hard running fish, you might look at something that's gonna be a true disc drag that's gonna have a decent amount of resistance to where this is gonna stay smooth and really be effective for what you're doing. And then click and paw, I use that a lot for my small stream and creek fishing. I just think it really is a more direct connection with the fish of you and the fish. I think it's a really, really neat element to add into your arsenal. Uh, and the last thing I would say about how drags are separated, there's a term called startup inertia. Startup inertia is basically the ability of this drag to engage smoothly. And so if you see, if I push on that handle, it's not jolty, it doesn't do this, it doesn't jump. It's very, very smooth. That transition from static to moving, that is startup inertia. And that's something that the better the drag system, the more seamless that transition from static to moving in the drag engaged. The smoother that is, the higher in the drag system usually is. So hopefully that answers some of your questions about fly reel drags. And thank you so much for tuning in and watching Shop Talk. Obviously, reach out with any questions you have. You can reach us at the Fly Shop via email or through phone. Uh, you can even contact us here on social media or in the comments. We're happy to answer anything we can. We really appreciate you being a part of our fly fishing community, and we'll see you next time.